the Red Sox simply couldn't finish the job against the Minnesota Twins. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Red Seat Radio. My name is Corbin. The Boston Red Sox officially split a four-game series against the Minnesota Twins, winning the first two games and then losing the last two games. That officially puts the Boston Red Sox at 39 and 37 on the year. That's about three games out of a wild card spot, and obviously we're still in last place in the AL East. Now, in my opinion, this series was really winnable for the Boston Red Sox. It really all came down to one game, and the Red Sox just simply could not get that last run across the plate so what we're gonna do in today's videos we're gonna break down this latest red sox series we're gonna talk about the red sox highlights the red sox lowlights and we're gonna talk about why the red sox just simply couldn't finish the job as well as how this series is going to affect the 2023 red sox season but before we get into that do me a favor Make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. Helps these videos out a ton, and it would mean a lot to me. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one. Let's get into it. As always, let's break down the offense first. And when we're talking about this latest series, there were really two different offenses in this one. You had the offense in the first two games and the offense in the last two games. In terms of who had the best series, I got to go with Christian Arroyo. In my opinion, he was the offensive MVP. Dude had played in two games in this series where in one of them, he went five for five with a home run and a bases clearing double. The first five for five in his career. And in the other game he played in, he went two for four, making him seven for nine in this series series and over the last couple of series actually Christian Rose has been hitting the ball really really hard it's just been right to people or people are making fantastic plays against him this was the first series where they, the balls finally started to fall in and you saw exactly how well he's been hitting the ball lately in this series I still believe in Christian Arroyo and it stretches like this that really do make me believe outside of Christian Arroyo Justin Turner continues to be insane at the plate he went five for ten in this series with three RBIs including a massive 447 foot home run that was just absolutely crushed this is now the third series in a row jt has been a mainstay of this offense he's been extremely impressive at the heart of this order and i don't know how many times we're going to say this but he's just such a fantastic at bat up there i really do think it makes everyone in the lineup just that much better so jt has been an absolute workhorse for this red sox team tristan costas actually had a really good series as well average wise he went five for 18 so a bit below 300 but it was three rbis he had a home run he had a really clutch double to tie the game in the ninth inning and costas is starting to put together really good at bats at least a bit at the plate right he's really starting to take off and look like a much different hitter currently in june tristan costas has a 140 ops plus meaning that so far this month tristan costas has been 40 percent better than the average player in baseball this is exactly what we needed to see from tristan costas masata Taki Yoshida had a bit of an interesting series in this one. He did have one game where he also hit a 447 foot home run. It was an absolute monster mash out to right center field. Now what's interesting is that 447 feet is the longest home run for the Red Sox this year and they both just happened to be hit in back-to-back -back games by back-to-back -back hitters and they were hit at the exact same distance. I just think that's a super interesting statistic but outside of that one big home run, Masataki Yoshida in the same game had an RBI single but outside of that game he was pretty quiet all series long one thing I've noticed is that he's really struggling with change-ups and splitters at the major league level and you could start to see a lot of pitchers start using that low sort of splitter or change up at the bottom of the zone and Masataki Yoshida swinging right over it just something I've noticed I don't think it's going to be a huge problem Masa has been pretty quick to adapt so far this year Adam Duvall hit his first home run since coming back from the IL a home run to dead center field it was his only hit of the series so still trying to get back to normal but we're starting to see that power stroke get back to what it was and hopefully that is a really good sign Jaron Duran had a three RBI game in this one it was actually a game where he went three for three with three straight doubles which is really impressive turns out he was using Justin Turner's bat the entire game so maybe there's some magic in Justin Turner's bat everyone who touches it has a really really nice game maybe Justin Turner should start giving bats to the entire team Alex Verdugo had a four RBI game 
in this series. In total, he also had two triples and a hit in all three games he played in. If you don't know already, he is on bereavement leave. He's going to his grandmother's funeral, so we will not see Alex Verdugo for about four days. One thing about Alex Verdugo that I just need to say real quick, how did Alex Verdugo not make the finalist for all-star game voting, right? The dude is top five, sometimes even top one in a lot of categories when it comes to AL outfielders, and yet no one voted for him. He didn't even make the top 20. So Alex Verdugo got absolutely robbed for the all-star game. In this series, he was once again, Mr. Consistent. Overall, like I said, the offense was really hot for two games and kind of disappeared in the last two games. They were able to get runs across the plate in the third game, but you end up going three for 15 with runners in scoring position in third game, where you had plenty of opportunities to win that ball game and you just couldn't get the job done. You couldn't get that run across the plate. And then of course, and that makes it even more worse because the next day you face Joe Ryan who was an absolute buzzsaw on the mound right you barely got any hits off of him I think there was three or four all game long so yeah you just you had the opportunity to win this series offensively and you just couldn't get that done now one thing I want to say is that this needs to stop right now right you can't keep going on winning streaks and then just cool off I mean obviously at some point you're going to lose but it's how you bounce back from losing after a winning streak that makes good teams Seems great right the fact that you're able to okay great we won five in a row now we've lost two in a row let's get back and let's win four in a row or next time let's win three in a row right last time the Red Sox went on a streak like this they absolutely cooled off and sort of disappeared that can't be the case this time and it all starts and begins with this Red Sox offense which again sort of disappeared in the last two games which is going to happen throughout the season right you're not going to score 15 16 runs a game at some point someone's going to come in and shut you down it's how you respond to this that needs to change from what we've seen so far this season. As for the pitching side of things, I think for the most part, it was pretty decent. The starters in this series were James Paxton, who had another really good outing. He went six and a third innings, allowing three earned runs on three hits and striking out seven. Honestly, outside of a three run shot, Paxton was really, really good. He was not allowing a ton of runners to reach base. I think the only person to reach second base was on a walk. And then obviously that home run outside of that, no one was really doing damage against Paxton. He continues to be a model of consistency. Game two, we saw Cutter, who had a really great outing. He went five innings, allowed zero earned on five hits and strike out five. When Cutter Crawford doesn't walk people in his starts, he's a really, really great starter. And that's exactly what we saw in this series. Hopefully he can sort of be able to build upon that and develop out of that in terms of how he's going to start games because he is going to be in this rotation for a little bit. Uh, Whitlock was okay. It wasn't the greatest outing in the world, but he did end up going a seven innings, allowing four earned on eight hits while striking out six. And I will say, you could tell he didn't have his best stuff this game and still managed to give you seven innings while keeping you in the game. So overall, I don't hate this start at all from Garrett Whitlock. It's going to happen from time to time, especially when you're still trying to get used to being a starting pitcher. Now, the last game of the series, technically Justin Garza started, but really this was Brandon Walter's start all along. They just wanted to try and ease him into the game as opposed to throwing him in as a starter. Brandon Walter made his major league debut and it was really rough to start, but he he picked himself up and he managed to go six and two thirds innings, allowing three earned on six hits, striking out two and walking three. Like I said, it's really not a bad major league debut by any means. It felt like it may have been a little bit worse than it actually was because of the final score and because of what Justin Garza did before Walter came in. But overall, this was, I mean, for a guy who has never pitched in major league baseball before, a pretty decent stat line. As for the bullpen in this series, it was okay. It was honestly kind of uneventful. Outside of Corey Kluber coming in and just giving up batting practice, it felt like the home run derby. Luckily, the Red Sox had scored a million runs by that point. But outside of him, Justin Garza had a good outing and a really bad outing. Caleb Ort had a rough bottom of the 10th where he got walked off. But at the same point too, like we talked about with the offense, they probably shouldn't have even been in that situation for Ort to blow that. Plus it's Caleb Ort. We probably aren't expecting him to be lights out for every single series. So yeah, I think it was a bit of a 
this sort of mixed bag in the bullpen. The guys who you know can perform are going to perform. Winkowski had a good outing. Martin had a good outting. Kenley had a good outing, right? The core, kind of core three there did really well. What I, One thing I do want to point out is the fact that you were using Justin Garza a lot. You were using Caleb Ord a lot. You were using Brandon Walter. The state of this Red Sox pitching staff, really, it feels a little bit better than it actually is. You've got so many injuries, so many guys who you thought were going to perform that didn't perform in Kluber and Ort and guys like that. You had a DFA Brazier because of his poor performance. It's a really interesting state for the Red Sox bullpen and rotation right now. But overall, in terms of the series as a whole, again, I think this was extremely winnable for the Boston Red Sox. The offense simply just couldn't get that extra run across in the third game. And obviously, you can't do anything about the fourth game. And again, you're going to lose ball games, right? No one in the history of baseball has ever been able to go 162 and 0. It's just not simply possible. So you're going to lose baseball games. The biggest question to me is how do the Red Sox bounce back this time? Because last time when they had a win streak and then started losing, they really, really started losing. You can't keep doing that again if you want to be anything but a 500 ball club because that's what 500 ball clubs do right they go and they win 10 games or they and then they lose eight games that's just how 500 clubs operate and if you want to be anything above a 500 club you got to operate better than that and to me i think the most interesting part of this team going forward is going to be the pitching staff right i think the offense will be fine and figure itself out but i think the pitching staff and how they can kind of figure themselves out especially having to go with a spot starter or an opener over the next couple of weeks Weeks while Tanner Houck gets back and ready to go is going to be vital to whether or not this team can even successfully bounce back in a big way. So in my opinion, the next couple of series are going to come down to how well can the pitching staff perform. But that's just my opinion. So let me know in the comment section down below. What did you think of this latest Red Sox series? What did you think of the offense? What did you think of the defense? What did you think of the pitching? Let me know all your thoughts on the latest Red Sox series in the comment section down below. As always, if you made it to the end of this video, do me a favor. Make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. Helps these videos out a ton, and it would mean a lot to me. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one, and I will see you in the red seats.